okay on the troubleshooting this is something very very important first have your topology diagram ready that means you should know what what kind of clients are connected where is your switch and is it directly connected to the authenticator or is it far away what is the physical connection you should know so make sure you have the physical diagram of the topology ready and also you check all the ip addresses whether have you configured your radius server properly is the est download certificate ip is configured the est server reachability is there or not check that one the certificate which you have is it valid certificate and are you using the right application for that one for example instead of having the application you might be using a certificate for a est but you are trying to get a eep tls for a user defined so those all things you have to check okay so if you look at it if you want to go step by step check the dot one x supplicant configuration what you have configured in your policy check that one after that you associate have you associated to a right uplink port you might have one or two uplink port and uh, you might have uh, a lag interface currently it is not supported so check that one whether it is uh, associated with the right uplink once you do that on the dot one x authenticator it is must to check by enabling the mirror or so like epal packets are reaching the dot one x authenticator port or not before even you go to the triple a server check that one because until unless you get the eep identity it will not be able to send the radius access request to the triple a server so you have to make sure that is reaching the dot one x authenticator port and once it reaches to from the authenticator to triple a server the communication is radius that means the triple a server should be reachable by this dot one x authenticator check the radius server configuration once it's all there and we should be able to we should be able to get done with this dot one x supplicant and easy to troubleshoot if all of this are in place configuration wise we saw this one there is no change on the configuration these are some of the things which i was thinking on the dot one x authenticator which are must basically you are going to configure the uh, interface whichever the dot one x authenticator inter interface with the enable with the port access dot one x authenticator you have a dot one x as well as mac auth you are you can look at it in case if you have a some mac auth client connected you have a switch and you have some mac auth client connected and you want to authenticate on this port 1/1/1 slash slash which i'm going to show you in the demo you can do so by having the mac auth also enable on this dot one x authenticator okay so next on the mirror so this is also very important as i was talking about getting the epal packets on the dot one x supplicant as well as on the dot one x authenticator you have way to do it you have to enable the mirror you can also do it with the destination cpu make sure you don't have the data traffic running on your network if it is production network use the mirror session on the data ports if you want to do a cpu make sure it is not in the production network you can also capture this packet on the aaa server once you have the client traffic coming on the dot one x authenticator you can also make sure the radius packet is reaching the aaa server or not by capturing at the aaa server show commands we covered i would like to cover the event which is very important we are introducing four event log as you see on the screen these event ids are constant for the dot one x supplicant um you can see here only one which is uh, it's a error is this is the fourth one which will tell you what kind of um, error it is whether you have enabled on a lag port and all of that it will clearly say it is not supported and it will also give you a event log there is a debug also uh, debug.1x supplicant uh, that debug will provide you even the details about the certificate challenges with that let's get on to the demo this is the flow of the demo i'm thinking so first we'll complete the eep tls that is user defined and the est enrollment and then we'll see the see the eep md5 and we can also see the start mode and fail mode configuration can eep success and also eep force multicast right let's get with the user defined uh, certificate demo the configuration required for this is you have to make sure crypto pk application dot one x certificate the user defined certificate is attached and you have to check that one using the command show crypto pki certificate for the user defined certificate and make sure it is installed and it is associated application is dot one x supplicant and check your certificate whether it is valid and it is same thing is installed you can see here it is associated application is dot one x supplicant and it provides that clearly on the crypto pki certificate with that let's get to the demo
I have so many aliases which are going to be useful for you. Let me show you before I execute these commands. What you see on the uh, right hand side of your screen is what the topology we are looking at. Basically, uh, we have a supplicant. We have a supplicant which is CX supplicant which is connected on a uh, applicant uh, port called one slash one slash forty eight, and we have a dot one x authenticator which is on one slash one slash five. So if I go back to the supplicant, the command to check the configuration is basically we are going to execute show running AAA authentication port access dot one x supplicant. That is what the CLI four I have kept it as a. You can see here it's a very simple configuration. It's a very simple configuration on the dot one x supplicant. You are getting into the config mode and configuring the dot one x supplicant, and you are enabling it one. As I was telling you, if TLS needs only the username, right? You don't need even need the password. I've kept it for the MD5 authentication. So that's all you need on the policy. And you are going to associate that to the interface, which is the uplink port one slash one slash forty eight, as you see on the screen, and which is connected to one slash one slash five on the dot one x authenticator. If you look at it, one slash one slash five is the where I've enabled. You you don't you don't need all of this configuration precedence and the auth priority for now. What you need is only this much dot one x authenticator and the enable and the mac auth enable on the dot one x authenticator. Once you have done, you have to execute check your radius server whether it is reachable or not. You can see here it is reachable perfectly fine. And I'll go back to my supplicant. Where I have attached this client, let me bring it up and show you with the command as you see on the screen. Show AAA authentication port access dot one x supplicant status. You should be able to see. This is the and you can check whether the which certificate it has been uh, using. Show crypto PKI. You can check the certificate. Currently, it is using the. EST enrollment certificate. You can also check that one with the certificate. You can give the name, and once you give the name, if you show the certificate, it will clearly tell me that this certificate is used for the EST enrollment. You can see here certificate has been installed and EST test status is EST success. So these all things you have to check before you check the EST enrollment. And the running configuration for the EST configuration, you guys know because it's already part of the uh, previous release. Let me show you how you can have this one. Crypto PKI EST profile. You are going to configure the profile. Make sure this uh, EST server is reachable, and you are going to configure the username and the right password to download that EST profile. Okay. With that, let's move on to the next demo, which is user-defined certificate. Let me go and first thing you have to do for that one is you have to change the certificate. So as we saw, show crypto PKI, right? PKI certificate. We can see here we have EST certificate which was working. Now I'm going to change it to client, which is nothing but the user defined certificate. The command to do so is crypto PKI application. Now you can see, as I was telling you earlier, we had only captive portal, EST client, all of this. Now we are introducing dot one x supplicant to attach the right uh, right certificate, user defined certificate. Now you can give the certificate name. Currently, I I have is the client, which is nothing but the user defined certificate which I have. Now because the radius server or the server which is responding to this client is currently sitting on a EST. You will see this client getting failed. Let us check that one whether the EST is getting failed or not. You can see here fail open. This is very important, which I was talking about. If you keep it as fail open, the client which is connected to this dot one x supplicant, let us consider this phone, will continue to get authenticated by the dot one x authenticator, even though the dot one x supplicant show port access client, even though it is failed. This is the dot one x supplicant. Which is connected, even though which is failed, all other clients which are connected to connected to this supplicant, like 
E70, C0 are all getting authenticated. That is what the meaning of fail open. I have another switch, which is AOS switch for the demo. Let me keep it shut for this time. You can watch this on show port access client. You can clearly see, even though the, the dot one x supplicant is failed now, it is fail open. The clients which are connected to this dot one x supplicants are getting authenticated properly. But if I go and change that policy, you can look at this one, show running config, AAA authentication, port access, dot one x supplicant. This is a good command to see the all the supplicant configuration. So if I go and change the policy as fail open closed, fail closed, and we'll do a re-authenticate. That re-authenticate command is port access dot one x supplicant restart. Now you can check all the one slash one slash one, whatever it was authenticated, those clients, you will not, let's see whether, uh, let's flush this one. Let's do a log off on the port access. Log off clients interface one slash one slash five. So show port access client, you can see here, the only one currently is supplicant which is trying to authenticate. Now it will get failed. Even though other clients are there, backside which is connected to this supplicant will not be onboarded now. You can check that one on the dot one X authenticator. Earlier, because the fail open was configured, you, you, you are seeing all the clients which are connected. Now, because we configured it as a closed in a branch deployment, now you should see only one client, which is also failed because we changed the uh, certificate and no other clients are getting onboarded. To control that one, the command is this one, fail mode, fail closed, okay? With that, let's go and change the uh, certificate on the Radius server so that we'll onboard the ETLS user-defined certificate. Give me a second. Okay. So you can see here, the status got changed to secure. My AAA server is started running the user-defined certificate. Now, whatever you are seeing now, earlier it was blocked. Now the certificate has been, we can check that one on the uh, client here, which certificate has been installed and which is certificate is running. Show crypto PKI certificate. You can see it's a client certificate, which is installed. And we can also check that one on the uh, issuer so that it is clear. Client, you can say PEM. So you can see here it is certificate installed properly. It is not a EST enrollment certificate. The AAA server, which I was trying on the background is I was trying to run the uh, Radius server with a user-defined certificate. So now you have the user-defined certificate configured on the device. And now you can see on the authenticator, the same device is now up. And also all the clients, because we kept it as failed closed, all the clients were not coming in. Now you can see the dot one X supplicant also came in and all other clients also came in. So now what we will see is we'll change this to MD5. And check whether the MD5 will be authenticated or not. So show AAA authentication dot one X port access dot one X supplicant. And we will check, we'll change this one from default EAP TLS method to EAP MD5. EAP method and the EAP method as MD5. As you see here, the EAP TLS is the default. That's where you are not seeing it on the policy. Now I'm gonna change it to EAP MD5. As soon as you change that one, if you have the username and password configured rightly on your AAA server, you should be able to see your client back. So you can see here now the EAP method is EAPMD5 and it is currently blocked. Let's check that one for a minute. So let us restart this one. It is currently held, support access dot one X authenticator, supplicant, and the restart. 
you can see the MD5 client is authenticated and it is secure properly. So in case if you are looking to capture this one, the way to capture is show mirror, make sure you are enabling the mirror on this port, right? And you capture this one either using the uh, T shark or as I showed you on the um, troubleshooting window. With this, let me stop here and hand over back to Daryl. So what we saw is both EAP MD5, EAP TLS user defined certificate, as well as the EST certificate enrollment. In case you're looking for a can if success, all of that is there part of this slide. So you can just take a look at this one and you can configure the can if success also. For example, EPMD5, this is what the configuration. In case you're looking for a start mode and a start close, this is the configuration. You're going to change it on the policy. Can if success, this is what the configuration you're going to do it change and on the policy. Force multicast, this is the configuration. 